everyone to the March 22nd, 2022 Winchester Planning Board meeting. Uh, we are being recorded both on Zoom and by WinCam. So if you don't wish to be recorded, please turn off your videos and your microphones. We ask you to turn your microphones off just until you're called on just to keep the noise down. So um, we'll do a roll call vote of uh, members so everyone knows who's here. Uh, let's start with you, Nick. Just say present, Nick Rosetta. Present, present uh, here. Thank you. Kurt Spring. Uh, here. Li Ching, Scott. Present. Uh, Sally Dale. Present. And Deeb Jerry's is present as well. That makes five of us. We also have with us our uh, recording secretary, Nancy Polcari, our town planner, Brian Zichelli, uh, Wincam, of course, uh, assistant town engineer, Brian Manter, and uh, a whole bunch of people from the community. Welcome all to um, for joining us this evening. We have a, uh, a fairly light um, agenda this evening. Um, we are going to do the, we're going to have our usual updates at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, our, after the uh, town elections, we always go through a board reorganization where we um, elect a new chair. And we also talk about um, liaisons to other committees and and i think maybe we can probably hold off on that one but we also want to talk about scheduling as in when will we return to um in-person or hybrid meetings or whether we will remain fully remote uh we will then turn to talking about the master plan implementation committee which is something that we've uh has sort of gotten on the back burner as we went through 10 Converse, and we've got a lot of irons in the fire, so we're going to go back and talk about that a bit. And then we have some meeting minutes to uh, to approve. And that's about it. So why don't we start with updates? Uh, Brian? Um, sure. Um, so um, I guess I'll do a quick update on the tree committee is that um, I don't think it really has been decided what the next steps uh, are going to be with in terms of an event or some other step. Um, but um, we had a really good brainstorming session at the last meeting um, about potential ideas on those kind of those uh, three arms of education, research, and legislation. Um, before I move to the next one, Sally or Dia, did you want to add anything to that tree meeting? I can add that there yeah. was discussion of leveraging Town Day, Earth Day, and Arbor Day um, in some way that was yet to be defined. Um, understanding, and I'm, I guess, oh yeah, Brian's right here. Good. Um, that Brian Manter has um, tree thoughts um, to be incorporated into the plan. Um, so I, it's not so much going to be an event as it's going to be leveraging town events. Does that sound right, Brian? What you remember? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, I think that was Brian with an I. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that the idea is Earth Day doesn't have anything that the town does. So we would be piggybacking on everyone else. But certainly Town Day is something that we could have um, a booth shared with committees between the CONCOM and um, Climate Action and the Planning Board and we could have materials ready for that and then brian with the why you had you have you were you were your name was brought up so go ahead and talk i guess oh yes uh, thank you um yeah i was one of the things that the town has been an active participant in has been tree city usa which is um an organization that supports arbor day um i believe the town has been an active uh, a full member of tree city usa for 18 years so it's been quite a while um <clears throat> this year is the 150th year of arbor day so you know it would be great to for the sit the town to plant as many trees as possible i think planting 150 trees on the 150th anniversary is very ambitious but um uh, it would be a lofty goal but i think that would be something that would be wonderful to achieve um and i'm trying to think of a way that we can partner between all the boards members of the community private and public 
entities to look at how we could potentially plant as many trees as possible um, throughout the town. There's a lot of good GIS data that indicates, you know, tree coverage um, and tree canopy. So we can kind of use a data driven approach to assess where we think trees could be planted. Um, and I think leveraging existing knowledge with the DPW on streets that have had historic historic tree, you know, trees that were there previously that were removed for one reason or another. So they've had success or that history of success of growing trees there. Um, so I think, you know, it'd be wonderful if we could start really pulling together all of our great resources and, you know, focusing on an effort to, you know, plant more trees in town. So when it is Arbor Day, the same day as, as Earth Day? Um, that is a, um, a great question. Um, I think the tree, I think, I think 20, uh, the 29th? town officially acknowledges Arbor Day as June 6th or something. I'll have to go back. Does that sound right? I, I just want to know how much time we have to pull together this army. <laughs> so I think, and we need to look at funding for plantings and things like that. So that's uh, just, just trying to do some logistics on that. Yeah, I think I think now that we're three months into the year calendar year, almost four months, I think it's, you know, it'd be very, very challenging to plant, you know, 150 trees um, in short, such a short period of time. I think it's just the idea of, you know, planting as many trees as we possibly can. Um, and, uh, you know, well, uh, why, just, why don't we why don't we say 150 trees during the 150th year? Yeah, that's doable. Maybe not before Arbor Day, but that could be our kickoff event for planting. Yeah, trees. a noble, a noble goal. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess we'll have work offline to figure out how we get get all these pieces moving together. Um, I don't know when the next tree committee meeting is. Um, it's in two weeks. Two weeks. Well, then maybe we can. Uh, why don't we brainstorm? We'll, we'll do some or stuff offline. It's a week see. from it's a week from Thursday. But from this yeah. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, it's a week from this Thursday. So, so it was like, on the thirty yeah. first. Yeah, and I'm trying to. Uh, I'm also going to talk to DPW and the tree okay. warden, so to try to get them there as well for new people who haven't um, heard how, uh, um, well, just about the Peter Van Aken tree fund or how uh, trees are replanted under what under and what types of tree, you know they didn't, mm -hmm. um, they haven't heard that from him. So the hope is to it'll be available, which we don't know quite yet. Okay, cool. So I have, I have one like, more update. I have one more yeah. update beyond trees. If we if we had, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Or unless, unless we're not done, but it, it has to do with the um, transportation the transportation plan um, that Tool Design is um, working with the town in order to um, look at the larger vision and strategy for all different types of modes of transportation in town. And just this past week, they led. Um, two visioning exercises, one with internal town staff, and then another one with TTAC, the Transportation um, uh, Traffic and Transportation Advisory Committee. So that was a, a night meeting last Monday. They kind of um, actually brought up the 2030 master plan quite a bit because there, were a lot, there was a lot of public input um, for the 2030 master plan. And uh, a lot of the goals out of that, um, they were kind of bouncing those those goals off of off of these two groups, um, and it landed quite well. Uh, it didn't. It, it certainly helped that it was about eleven hundred unique people that went into the public process for for the master plan. Um, so there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of voices there. I believe it was close to thirty eight hundred different instances, um, but that's obviously not thirty eight hundred different people of different types of public input. So that has to do with um, online and 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 in person um, and emailing and all of that. So that was actually quantified by JM Goldson. So anyway, I just want to say that that process is is uh, is just now starting. Uh, the group, the planning board has been asking about where is where are we in that process? So um, just did those, they just did those first one hour visioning, um, like I said, with these two groups. Um, and I believe they're gonna be going to the select board next with um, kind of like a check-in. So I'll let you know when that's going to be. And that was all I have for that. Um, back to you, Dan. Well, are they intending to come talk to us since we're the keeper of the master plan? Uh, they're, I think- They're using I, our ideas. Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know where in the process that is, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. 
but okay. yeah, but um, yeah, I, I'm sure we are not going to be uh, left out. It's a question of when they're going to be going around to several of the different boards and committees. And this is definitely at very early stage, but I, um, I can talk with, um, there are two people that are leading up that uh, effort at tool and we talk to them often. So, um, I can, I got yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what the, what auspice this comes under. Is this the downtown, whatever it's called plan? Right. So, improvement so yeah. action plan. So the DIAP, the downtown improvement action plan was an initiative uh, by the select board that is that is located to one geographical area and ta is talking about public improvements and connections within a pedestrian and and, um, and bike uh, connections um, within those areas of the downtown. That's the DIAP. It's a very specific targeted area. Mm -hmm. The other is a town meeting funded transportation plan. I believe okay. it was... I believe it was under actually the first name of it was like a traffic plan or traffic, um, which didn't sit well with a lot of people that were really interested in, in not necessarily dealing with traffic. If anything, it'd be calming traffic, but really it's, it's really having a full bike and ped and vehicular plan uh, for town. Okay. Um, so that's a two totally different projects and two totally different scales, I think. Great. Okay. Thank you. And, um, no, yep, that was it. Uh, so I, I thought we might want to bring up the uh, MBTA um, MBTA community zoning. Brian, help me again with what that. Sure. So this is the um, the change to Section Forty A of the Zoning Act. Uh, this was as part of the Economic Development Bill. Uh, that required communities that were defined with a very specific definition as what is an MBTA community. We are technically, according to this definition, a bus community. And everyone's like, that makes no sense because we do not have a lot of bus routes running through town, nor do a lot of people take the bus. We are by far a, what m most people would consider as a commuter rail suburb. We would even define that in the, it's even defined that way in the master plan. However, the state has uh, defined it uh, in a very specific way, and we're going to go over this um, toward, you know, more, more in April um, because there is a, a requirement by May 2nd for the select board to, specifically the select board, to be briefed um, on what these, what, um, what these MBTA guidelines for increasing density around transit. So that's what this whole, what, what all we're talking about, it's, it's a very uh, large document that's very complex in terms of the amendment to the Zoning Act. But what it's trying to do is put more density in the, in, uh, around commuter rail stations and, and bus stations. Now, there's actually not too many bus stations in Massachusetts. There are several that are like, um, um, like when you think of North Station or South Station, but there's not too many bus stations. There are bus stops. That's not what we're talking about. So just so we're clear, because uh, it's pretty it's pretty unclear at, uh, at the moment, to be honest, the way that it's written, these guidelines on how to implement, the bi uh, implement this bylaw change are coming out of the Department of Housing and Community Development. And we're going to be giving, um, there's been a number of comments that have been given to DHCD. There's a couple of deadlines along the way. One of these deadlines is that um, it's essentially a public uh, meeting in front uh, in front of the select board, which could be a joint meeting of the planning board and the select board, explaining how this bylaw affects town. Um, it's talking about having a density of 15 units per acre um, that could potentially cover 20% uh, of all of the units in town, meaning that out of the 8,000 or so units in town, we would have to be able, we would have to zone so that 1,600 uh, units, not will be built, but the zoning would allow 1,600 units to be built within a half a mile of our commuter rail station. That's a lot of numbers and a lot of information right now. The point is, is that those numbers do not work for every single municipality in Massachusetts. And everyone, every municipality is basically like, 
oh my gosh, this is not at all like the the idea basically of having the minim, a minimum of triplexes everywhere within a half a mile of, of, of downtown, um, you know, that's potentially very altering. So the idea right now is that these are, these don't have to be implemented um, for another, it's unclear, it's somewhere between a year or two and now. And the only consequence is that um, we would not be able to, um, we would not be able to apply for mass development one, uh, and one-stop grants, which are, you know, these are, it's millions of dollars, but there's no penalty, I guess you could say. So another very long-winded, but it's actually way more complicated than how I've explained it. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions, and this is basically going to be a talk of the planning board, as well as kind of uh, me and anyone else from the planning board kind of running a meeting with the select board explaining all of these things um, that I have not fully explained to you yet. So, Can you clarify sorry. the May 2nd deadline? May 2nd is, is that um, a public meeting uh, where somebody, doesn't matter who, but someone from, meaning whether it's the planning board or the planning department or whoever, but someone needs to present the draft guidelines for the MBTA community to the select board. So that has to be on a select board agenda item, which I've already alerted the, uh, the town manager um, uh, and the manager's office to, to schedule that site sometime in April. So I, I, the, the underlying um, caution here is that these are draft guidelines and that I think there's going to be a significant amount of work that needs to be done. One of the things that um, will be available are funds for technical assistance so that we can figure out much more um, in much greater detail what this would entail. Um, obviously, we have, uh, we're looking at rezoning North Main Street. It makes sense from the town's point of view to try to put some density of housing on North Main Street, which does happen to be one of our two major bus corridors. So there's a question as to what the flexibility is in terms of where this higher density housing need has to be zoned. If you draw a, a circle around the bus station downtown that's a half mile in radius, you cut through a lot of neighborhoods that I think everyone would say would should not be rezoned. Um, so there are a lot of historical neighborhoods we should keep. So I, I think there's a, I think we need to look for flexibility and try and, and real, having DACD realize that every community is different and how this is implemented or in every community is going to look a little different based upon what the facts on the ground are. Um, so I know Brian, you're, you're going to be submitting some comments by the end of this month. Uh, there is a deadline of March 31st for comments on something or other. And so Brian, I know that you're planning on from the planning department submitting some comments. Um, but uh, this is all very much a work in progress. One just really quick clarifying question, not to hold you to it, because I know it's a draft, but a little while ago, you said that that generally, without being sensitive to individual communities, they're looking for 1500 units within a half mile of each station. Is that what you said? Uh, so they're looking for these are the numbers. 20% of your housing stock, whatever that unit for us, for us, we have about 8,000 units in, in town. Right. So 20% would be 1,600. So they're not, they, oh, so I see. Okay. it was saying, so they're saying that 20% that you should be able to zone for 20% of your units to be within a half a mile of the train station. And the idea is that that works really well for some communities and it really does not work well for a lot right. of other communities. And the question is, is how much should a community be penalized or not be able, it's not necessarily penal, but not be able to apply for funding because of the natural housing uh, landscape that exists. So. Right. And, and it also the, the percentage of your total stock is dependent upon how they've labeled your community, whether you're a, a light rail community, a bus community or a commuter rail community. And uh, there's, it's it's the way they've done it is is it's not necessarily arbitrary but it's certainly um bizarre at first look so i mean that's one of the things 
we probably want to look hard at is how, why is it that our town, which is, I would say, primarily a commuter community is labeled as a bus community just through some accident of geography. So I think there's a, there are, there are a number of things to look at on this over the long term, but this has been ongoing for a number of months and I, it's still on turn, it's still ongoing. So um, to, the key thing is we will have to have a, uh, a, a briefing of the select board. And I think that would be really well, I think if it were a joint planning board, select board and even housing partnership board, because all three of those bodies have a, have a stake in this. So um, anyway, um, I'm gonna shut up about updates unless there are any other updates we've managed. I just to... had a question, Brian. Um, do we have any news about what projects Winchester is getting ARPA funding for? No, um, that was all contingent in terms of, that. that's not true. That was all put on the back burner until the election. So because the, the, those ARPA funds, most of those ARPA funds are are kind of with the select board's determination with the manager. So they, uh, I, that's all I know at the moment. So the short answer is no, that has not been decided and they haven't met yet. They'll still, they'll meet next week. I would imagine ARPA is a very high priority, probably a top five uh, for the select board. Um, that's my, that's totally me. That's not based on any information <laughs> other than what I think. Uh, right. So. Okay. That's if helpful. You Thank you. Board. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, I think that's a top five issue for them. That's a lot of money that we don't normally just get, you know, with $7 million just given to us. Um, there's a lot of people that want that to go to specific things. So I, they, it's, it's, high think? Pri yeah, it's high priority. <laughs> okay. Um, I think if we have no further updates, um, we can slide into our next agenda item. Which is um, reorg oh, thank you, Brian. Reorganization of the planning board, scheduling and onboarding. So um, why don't we why don't we um, introduce each other to each other? I think four of us know each other, but we do have a new member who's probably interested in knowing what this crazy crew who signed up to be on is like. So um, Nick, do you want to go first, or do you want to do you want to let us tell the tale? Sure, I'm I'm thrilled to be a part of the group. I'm looking forward to working with uh, all of you. I had mentioned, uh, I think, as uh, I began to think about running, uh, that I'd hope to bridge all of our constituencies and address uh, concerns from every neighborhood, and then try to bring. Uh, some cohesion there, uh, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning uh, the workings of the planning board and to uh, making contributions. Uh, but uh, so, I'm, so I'm looking forward to coming meetings, uh, but I've been a resident uh, in Winchester, I guess, well, since I was two, uh, uh, back some time ago, but recently my wife and I moved back from New York city to uh, Winchester uh, so that she could start a job in Cambridge as a uh, biologist. And uh, so we're, uh, we're now at Two Pine Street. Uh, but uh, I, and uh, I thought this would be a, a good way to get involved and to contribute. So looking uh, very much looking forward to uh, being a part of the group. Welcome. Excellent. Uh, do we want to go in reverse? How, who, who wants to say something next? Anyone jump in? Sure, I can go, Deb. I mean, sure, welcome back. Um, uh, as the as the, the former newbie to the planning board, now I can pass the torch on to you, Nick. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've been, I'm, I'm the newest member, I've only been on since October, served as part of like an interim vacancy. Um, filling a scene of someone who who left and moved out of town and then was just recently reelected uh, for a one year term. Um, thanks, Sally. <laughs> and, uh, it's it's been really interesting. I can just tell you firsthand, just getting up to speed. There is there's a lot that this board does, and I certainly didn't appreciate the full extent of um, you know certainly how much work and how much time goes into this. And I, I look around this Zoom screen and and I'm amazed at how much time and how much energy and um, how much of a commitment it is and how much time everyone here puts on into it. So I, I really, I've grown to really appreciate 
you know, um, how a lot of members of our town serve on these boards and really make a huge commitment. So it's uh, that's that's just my observation, but, but welcome and, and happy to have you on board. Thank you. Hello, Dan. Hey, go ahead, Yiching. Hi, uh, is it, do you go by Nicholas or Nick? Nick, Nick is, is good. Uh, okay, welcome, welcome. Thank you um, so much. I'm Yiching and I am also new, so four out of five of us. I'm new, I'm one year into this and it was a really steep learning curve, I have to say. I've never been in town government before. Um, I wanted to join because I have um, a background in architecture, sociology, sort of the big picture idea of the built environment is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, we are um, maybe in our sixth year here, um, moved from Cambridge, Somerville to Medford to, to Winchester. So a little bit uh, stuck at a time um, sure. outside. So I think this is where we'll land. Um, and it's it's been a really interesting and I, I too appreciate very much um, sort of how how powerful actually the zoning is in the codes and um, how that codifies and designs you mm -hmm. know, the town. So it's it's really good and interesting work and I, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to getting your design perspective and it's nice to uh, have the opportunity to work with an architect. <laughs> Sally, you want to go next or shall I butt in? I can go. So I came in to the planning board same time as I Ching. We were elected as a cohort, which is very nice. Um, and it's been indeed a steep learning curve. Um, and some very important projects have come before us in one year. Um, and I think learning what we do, I found it helpful to think of it um, as almost like case studies like they do in school because every time you're trying to dig into one of the zoning issues, it's really complicated. Sometimes the wording is hard to decipher or it sounds subjective, but it's very meaningful. And the best way that I've learned how to interpret it is by these looking at each case that we've addressed over the year. It's been very, very educational. And I agree with I Ching that the planning board has a huge impact on the town um, I think about towns that I drive through that I don't think look good. And I think about their planning boards and the decisions that they made or didn't make or the, 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 the um, forces of change that they addressed or didn't address. And I think Winchester has been really lucky over the years um, to go through so many transformations in, um, what is it, 160 years? I forget when we... Or incorporated Brian, but um, and to have as beautiful a town as we have serving such a broad range of members of our community. And I would hope that we would not only keep it that way, but make it better. Um, and I love all the stuff we're doing with bikes and walking, just as an aside. So yeah, here's to another great year, guys. Yeah, it's, I think the last couple of years on the planning board have probably been the toughest that I've seen. When I've been on the board for six years, uh, moved to town in uh, 97, I think. My memory fades. Um, I think the most exciting thing for me is that the planning board is taking ownership of the master plan and, and, and really looking at that as a way to help guide the town. I think it's something that um, most it's sort of been, I won't call it ignored, but it hasn't been seen in the, in the important light that it has. Um, and so when I think of the planning board's mission, I think it is to really to, to look forward in time and, and to make those changes because zoning takes time to come into effect. You can change the zoning, but if the developers aren't ready, I mean, there's, you're trying to set things up for future direction. And so you kind of have to understand somewhat where you want things to go. Um, I think that we've had a we've had some really tough projects in front of us. Um, I don't know if this board was on for 654 Main Street. I think Cheryl was on for that one. Um, that was the first big project downtown. Um, we just went through 10 Converse. Um, I think that we are going to be seeing a lot more interest in de developing in the town center. And so I think this board, because it's the permit granting, it's special permit granting authority there is going to see a lot more action. 
and we're going to have a lot of difficult decisions that are just, I mean, that's, I think the thing that, you know, when I came into this, I had a, a fairly narrow understanding of what the planning board, how, what it touches in terms of how much it works. And then I really came to realize that, you know, everything you see around you in town is just not happenstance. It happened because somebody had an idea. And at this point in time, you may disagree with Lawick out there because you'd say, well, that isn't meeting our current needs, but it's not because someone didn't think about it. So I think that's one of the, the part of part of being on the planning board is a humility, realizing that in, in 30 years, people look back at what you did and say, my God, what were they thinking? So I think there's, there's, uh, there's part of that. So, um, Anyway, so that's, um, so I'll, I'm, 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 a, I'm a scientist by training. I should throw that in there. Um, so um, that's my background. Um, so uh, we get to the point now, I think, where we are ready to look on reorganization of the board. And so that essentially means that we select a chair and, a, and a, technically they're called a clerk, but we also think of it as a vice chair in this board. Um, and at this point, people can throw their hat in the ring if they'd like. Um, we have had a tradition in the past where the vice chair moves into the chair's position. So that's been a long stand. Well, it's not a long standing tradition, but it's something that we strove to a few years ago. Um, it has been interrupted a couple of times. Um, so why don't we, I'll just open it up to the floor. Anyone wants to throw their hat in the ring, uh, please do so. And then we can discuss I see a question on somebody's face. No, I just want to make a motion. Can I make a motion? Oh, um, uh, yeah, you can make oh, a motion. To, to, to nominate Dieb for chair? Yeah, I don't know if we actually need, need motions or with seconds okay. or whether we can just do nominations. So I guess it's just a, a nomination. Yeah, OK. I was going to say that I'd be happy to throw my hat in the ring if Dieb wants to take a breather for a year. So that's also out there. Okay. Um, any other any other candidates? And I missed your hand. Sorry, Sally. The hand looked as the same color as the background in that corner of your screen. Um, so that's a really interesting thing. And I, I do I want to take a breather for a year? And. Um, I think I want to take, I want to, I, I would love to take a breather starting next year. I think that I, I, I will, what I'm thinking is this would be the last year I'm chair ever. I don't really want, I don't think that it's good to have someone who sticks around for too long as chair, because I don't think that's good for the sustainability of the group. Um, so So I would like to continue for another year. Um, and I, I recognize that that uh, may be a little bit of a break from the new tradition we're trying to set. Well, I, I think that the practice of vice chair to chair or the vice chair as a chair in training and so on is a good practice across lots of boards and committees in town. And it's it takes its own shape with every group. Um, as you said, it's it's not even a tradition. It's just a it's a practice that varies from board and committee to board and committee. So sorry, I have a COVID kid here, um, but uh, <laughs> it just hit our family oh, no. <laughs> after two oh, COVID years. COVID hit your family. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry to hear yeah. that. Um, but I want to uh, say um, the reason why I would nominate Dieb would be because we are in such an unstable time in on the board. I feel like we have gone through um, quite a change, four out of five. I mean, two out of five of us have been here for a year now, but I there was just so much to learn and so so much to um, guide in, in the sh ship of um, how this, this goes. So I, I appreciate the leadership and I appreciate the uh, um, kind of understanding of the history of this. Well, what, what I would say is that if we if we continue with the, the, the chair and the vice chair succession that and this is something that 
Awesome. I don't know if there was, I hope that as we go through this year, there will be more time for us to, so if we're not bogged down by massive projects like 10 Converse, that there will be a chance to transition. And I think one of the things that worked well um, between the transition points in the last couple of chairs was that there was an overlap period the last several months where there was a um, ability to, to, well, it was a transition period. So things went smoothly. There wasn't an abrupt. And that's so I, I am committed to do that. And um, I think last year was, uh, I sure hope it isn't like this this year as well. I mean, so, um, and I, I appreciate Sally that you have that, you want to come into the take on the mantle of chair uh, and I am more than happy to turn it over to you at the end of this year I just I just feel like we're in the middle of a few things that I would like to see a little a little more further down the line we have so many irons in the fire right now we do and, and I totally honor your yeah. willingness to continue leading this group and leading us through that labyrinth of projects. It's more like a forest, forest of projects and, and demands. So I think yeah. it's, I'm happy to okay. be at your side and learn from the whole group and from the town. Well, I appreciate that. So I guess we, we if, if, if there are, if process wise, I think we need to, to actually cast a vote and so um, I guess the I guess the 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 way to do it would be to go around and for each person to name who it is they wish to be chair, and then um, that's it. The majority will take it. So um, we can do this. I don't have my random number generator here, so I can't. I will just do it in the random position you are on my screen. And if you want to, you can abstain. That's perfectly legal. Uh, I Ching. Um, I DM, um, and I appreciate the uh, transition to Sally later. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, Sally. Yes, I support your chairmanship um, this year and will be very grateful for the chance to partner with you to learn more and be ready in the spring of a year from now um, and to help transition into that spring with you. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Kurt? Uh, yep, I, I support you, uh, your continued position as chair. Okay, great. And Nick, last but not least. I support uh, your continued uh, chairmanship and, and then support uh, the transition as, as uh, you move forward. Okay, excellent. And I, I guess I vote for myself as well, which is really an odd thing. But, uh, but you're so allowed I, to do it. I, it's just so strange. I mean, it's just weird. Um, blame my mother for that. She always said that. Yeah, all of my good traits come from my mom. There you go. Um, anyway, so I guess that part is done. Now we do have a long list of um, committees that we reach out to. So, so Nick, this is we call them liaisons. Oftentimes, they're simply um, you. There are a couple of boards where we are um, we have actual voting positions on ex officio positions. These include. Um, housing Partnership Board, Capital Planning, I think Committee on Names. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 I think that's right. Um, and I think that's it. But then we also have informal sort of um, people who like for someone, we ComCom, Design Review, Historical, um, I forget. We have a whole list of like 30 different things that we Zoning um, Board of Appeals. ZBA, thank you. Um, so those are much less official. They're sort of like, we want to make sure that if there are issues coming up that we are, we are, we understand them. So the only thing that I would, I think I, we can, we don't have that list in front of us this morning, this evening, uh, Brian just pulled it up. I don't think we need to do this this evening per se. I think it's, we can pass this around and then Nick could get a little more information on which ones he'd like to uh, be part of, and we can shuffle them around. Um, the most important one at the moment, however, is the Capital Planning Committee. Cheryl was our representative to the Capital Planning, and they are gearing up for a uh, Springtown meeting. So we do need to appoint one to that so that they can start um, understanding what the issues are this year 
and capital planning has to make recommendations for um, where to spend the capital funds. So um, I open up the floor to whomever would like to do capital planning. I am willing to do so if no one else wants to do it. It is a uh, it is particularly time intensive this time of the year. So, um, so I, can you explain? Um, I mean, I know a little bit, but I don't know what I don't know about how capital planning works and what the rhythm of its year is and that, I guess that. So capital planning essentially is a review board for all of the town capital projects. And so for instance, um, if you wanna, if some building needs repair or you need to put large chunks of money into maintenance or something like that, those projects go before capital planning. Capital then takes a look at what the current budget is, the forecasting of the budgets, and it makes recommendations to town meeting as to which of these projects should go forward, should be funded by town meeting. So, and- The, the capital budget is parallel to the operating budget, right? There is a special pot of money which comes in. We had a special override many, many years ago, which, which just funds capital. And I think one other one, which I've already forgotten. Um, it gets a little fuzzy in my brain, but yes, there is a separate amount of money they have access to. And right. so they, um, so they ramp the, the big time of course is spring because that's when the town's budget is um, voted on by town meeting. And as the year continues, I believe if there are special needs, then they are um, involved, but I think at a lower rate of, of, of participation than in the spring. Spring is the big one. Because spring for the town meeting votes the budget. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's really winter into spring because it, it's really, yes. so capital planning brings many articles to town meeting. So what they're doing all their prioritization plan and scoring of all of these, you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of projects. It's a very, it is a very labor intensive. However, most of that, most of that heavy lifting has been done yeah, December, January, February, March, April, leading up to May. So anyone who would be going in now is, it, there's still a lot of work to, until until May, but most of it has been, has been. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I, I know that last year, one of the Heathers said that um, somebody good for it would be uh, somebody like a, a designer or an architect who understands um, building systems and, and how physical things deteriorate or need replacement, things like that. So I'd, I'd be curious, Nick, what your background is. And um, I, I, for, but for me, like I, I am totally overstretched, and I just would not be good for this. I think it would be too much. Mm. But Nick, I'd be curious. What uh, your... I'm actually uh, a, a CPA uh, by training, and I work as a consulting chief financial officer uh, for small companies. Uh, so I, I do have some background in. Uh, uh, finance, although I, I don't think I would step up at this point, just given my limited uh, knowledge of the entire process and the, what I feel I can uh, commit to at this point. Understood. And of course, we were hoping the sink or swim mentality would work here, but I guess not. <laughs> well, the last time we filled the position, it was because somebody wasn't in the meeting. <laughs> no, it was between me and Cheryl, and she yeah. didn't come into the meeting, so I just <laughs> her. But Kurt. You understand buildings, right? Uh, I mean, I live in one and I work in one. Uh, <laughs> I, sure, uh, but I, I would echo your. You. <laughs> I would probably echo your overstretched comment. I'm not sure. Um, I'm in a position not to be, you know, selfish, but to to add a whole lot to my load, um, candidly. Do you have what is the role of the planning board in the capital planning committee? We are a voting member. So um, in addition to being a voting member and votes happen in some rhythm according to the work of the committee, mm -hmm. what else do committee members do? I'm not quite sure, other than review lots of projects. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's, review, it's reviewing review. lots of projects through, through fi not just financial means, um, but so there's, there's certainly a lot of uh, 
or not a lot, but there's there's some finance involved, but it's 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 really looking at big picture as well as all the details of all of these different types of projects and what you feel is the most, you know, the highest priority. Essentially, you end up ranking money right. for projects. I mean, it's a big, you know, and it, these are big chunks of town and big big chunks of money for each for each, every year. Um, there, you know, it's very sought after in terms of all of this money. There's never, there's usually, I don't know, I'm throw this out three, four times as many uh, requests for capital projects than there is money. I think I've like heard that. them say that they have like a 20 year backlog of capital funding or something. I, I to truly would love to do that this project and maybe next year, but um, yeah, I, it, it does seem really interesting to me and I. It, uh, it, yeah, I mean, but but uh, Sally, what you're talking about is you're reviewing, you're reviewing a lot of different types of projects and it is kind of concentrated more, you know, four or five months of the year rather than the 12, but you know, um, and, and it's concentrated a lot around that pre spring town meeting. In terms well, so, of scheduling, but, it, but yeah. And they meet every week. So there are times they meet every week. Um, certainly during that, during that process, they meet on Wednesdays. They've met on Wednesdays, I think for 20 plus years, something like that. Um, you're, you're meeting with the assistant town manager, uh, and, um, uh, and uh, Meg White in engineering, who's the special projects coordinator. So you'll get to know them very well. Um, amazing people to work with, really easy to work with. That's that's the easy part, um, I think, working with them. I think the hard part is 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 the amount of time. I mean, I, I, this sounds like doom and gloom and that we're trying to scare you. It's just more of, it's, you know, Cheryl was not ready for the amount of time. She said it five times. She said it five times. I was not ready for the amount of time that it required. But um, I think that was probably our fault. That was not necessarily that it was so crazy. It was just our fault for not preparing her for that. Well, Diab, would you be the representative from the planning board to the capital planning committee, but allow me to be an under as part of my being an understudy chair, learn what I can so that when I Ching steps into the role a year from now, we're not both <laughs> unfamiliar with the responsibilities of the role. Because I think it's great that the planning board has a say in I, how I, we spend our capital money. That's yeah, a big no, I, privilege. I have no problem with that. I think that's, you know, to be honest, um, like everyone here, time is short, but I will certainly, um, that's something that I can do. Um, and I've like, been, are you allowed to share the background briefing documents? Um, maybe I think me? they're public meetings. They're public. They're, they're, okay. they're, 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 they are public meetings, and also th this does not need to happen once a year. In terms of if D Dieb could could take it for the next uh, meeting, there's no rules here. We can always designate someone else at any point during this year. So this is not yeah. the chair. We typically say, uh, barring barring uh, you know weird circumstances, you're the chair for the year. But these other liaisons and reps. Yeah. No rules. There's no rules. no rules. I I just I would just add that I my limited uh, uh, time, you know, uh, that I've I've gotten to know Sally. I would say that she's every bit as good as uh, as any financial professional uh, to be able to handle something like this. So, I think she'd be uh, uh, a, a fantastic resource, um, you know, and and, and co kind of co-chair with 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 Diab, uh, kind of being the lead. It sounds sounds great until we you know we do the transition. I I think there are two votes for Sally and one vote for me. So Sally gets to be the the <laughs> our, our capital planning rep. I'm joking. I'm joking. You don't have to do that. I think the I think the co chair thing sounds good to me. I mean, it yeah. uh, it kind of breaks it up a little bit. Yeah. So that works. Well, I mean, okay. I, how many people are on the capital planning committee? I think there are like five. Brian is counting. Or oh, there's more than five. Out. There's yeah. More there's than more than five. five. Uh, I want to okay. say. I hope he's that, yeah. Up. I want to say there's seven or more than that. But I'll, I'll oh remember. really? Okay. Well, I know Jimmy Johnson's chair. Helen Filio was on there for a long time. She used to be chair. Um, then you have. Is it like five. one person from this and one person from this and one yeah? Person? There are certain. There are some ex officio. So there's select board is on there. I believe planning is on there. Um, 
I don't know who else is on there. And then there are several. It's members. seven. It's, it's, it's seven. seven. Okay. It's one from the planning board, one from school committee, two that are appointed by FinCom, but one one of them who is a FinCom matter member. So one FinCom member, and then another another member of the community that's appointed by FinCom, and then three that are appointed by the select board. Oh, okay, not, appointed, but by not from board. the select board. Okay. So seven. Seven. Okay. And do you know, historically, Dieb, has the planning board um, um, been aligned with the other people or has it been kind of like a consistent uphill battle? Like we really thought you should have funded this and we were the only one who thought that or stuff like that. Does that so, happen? So historically, um, historically, we haven't. So when I got onto the planning board, uh, Betsy Kreger was our was our member on the the um, capital planning. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall that Bets Betsy brought back to the planning board much of, of what was going on. And at some point, I believe she she wasn't representing us right. at the meetings. Uh, at that point, Heather Von Nering took over. And I also don't know, I can't recall how much she came back and told us what was going on. It was never, I never got the feeling that there was a, a um, division of opinion as to right. which way to go. Well, I would imagine it would be a very deliberative process. Yes, it is. And it's, there's just so much that goes in front of them. And I, I've only spoken with Cheryl a couple of times about her experience. And I think it was simply everyone pretty much came to a, a, a consensus as to which way to go, mm -hmm, just good. because it's, you know, there is a limited amount of money. So I, I don't know that there was a great. Yeah, I, I, th I don't think that there was a. a, a I, I've, I've heard no friction in the eight yeah, years. Yeah. That's great. That's really good. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably a function of um, not only teamwork and leadership, but also the fact that there's kind of a lot of unity around the needs of the town as the master plan showed us. Or at least yeah. I think it showed us. So yeah, and and it's up to town meeting to to, to complain about the price of trucks and such. It's not the, the capital <laughs> plan that does do that. Well, I nominate Dieb to be on the capital planning committee with with the proviso that I'm happy to attend meetings he can't attend and receive all briefings and documents so that I can learn the work. Um, but Diab would um, be the person. And I, 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 I will accept that position with all of those. Um, I don't know how you call that. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Just, I'll just do it. We don't have to vote on this. I'm the only, <laughs> no one else has stepped up to it. So I, I don't mean it. That sounds disparaging, but I don't mean it that way. So I will. Yes. Yeah, so I'm more than happy to do that. Thank and you. Deb. I will. I'll, I'll reach out to Jimmy Johnson, who I think is still chair uh, and uh, let him know. Well, that they might be deciding tonight or tomorrow night too, right? Well, I don't know when they're, um, since they're appointed by by the select board, uh, the select board's not meeting, and I don't know what when if I don't I, I hope they don't put new people in just bef right before town meeting because that would be unfortunate. So I'll find out from Jimmy. I'll let him know and I'll find out what's going on. I'm happy to learn. I just don't want to jump in to the deep end. Yeah, okay. I think you're going to be a, a tremendous asset to that group, uh, Sally. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Um, so next off, so we're done with that. Um, we do have to talk about scheduling, and that is um, I miss when we move, and we will have to move from fully remote to hybrid. Um, and Brian, is there any more information from the state on when they're going to lift the emergency declaration? Yeah, so at the moment, um, boards and committees can do remote only if they choose um, until July. So that's what we're allowed to do. We, we can continue remote. We can do, we can do in person. Uh, hybrid is a little trickier, but still possible. Um, as of right now, I couldn't tell you what what uh, I know that um, ZBA is, I think, still meeting remote. I believe they just we just got the April meeting. 
is going to be remote only. Um, Select board has not decided, but uh, because they haven't met yet, they meet next week. Town meetings uh, in person. Town meeting is going to be in person, which I think many people are very, very excited about. <laughs> um, so that's good. Uh, but the, but in terms of the state, we can do we can do whatever we want. Uh, meeting we can do one of three options: um, hybrid, in person only, or remote only. Um, and the hybrid thing requires reserving the only owl that the town owns, right? Yeah, the clerk has said that she's willing to buy another one of these or as many devices as we need, uh, which are these that they're the devices is called an owl. Like you said, if you put it's a it's basically a 360 degree camera and oh. 360 degree, um, it can catch a, a room, all the audio in the room. But I think what we've already found out is that even these devices it's their people that are virtually going in, into the meeting they're not necessarily catching all the things right. that are happening in the meeting in person for various reasons so it's just it's it's actually it makes it harder to hold what you would yeah it makes it harder to hold a public meeting to say that it's uh to that it's hybrid right. it just adds another level of potential technical difficulty as well as potentially violating open meeting law unknowingly or not on purpose. Right. So the upside of virtual meetings is that you can wear your slippers to the meeting, right? Yeah, I, I, I would, you, you could say no that. Commuting. You could say that. You could say that there are benefits uh, for in-person meetings as well. I'm I, What I'm right. saying is that I guess, the, and this is my own personal opinion, I don't think that, I mean, the, the clerk is like, I'm willing to buy as many devices as we need. So the, the town hall is trying to be as accommodating as possible. Yeah. Right. They're trying to give us all the tech we, we need. And I'm just saying, this is more from a legal standpoint. I think me personally, even though I, 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 I don't necessarily want in-person meetings, I would prefer in-person meetings over a hybrid until we're sure that we can actually make that a public meeting virtual, like make it a true hybrid meeting, put it that way. Um, so you're just not comfortable with the technology being everything that it's promised to be at this point. And what what it does, I, what I'm doing, I'm being extremely conservative here. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of times the board deals with very, with legal matters, uh, you know, being a special permit granting authority, the idea of having an additional layer of issues does not excite me. Right. I, I guess that's what, it, that's like the conservative aspect. Um, but, and but yeah, I, I think that if we're if we're thinking about doing in person, we should do in person. And that I'm not quite I, I'm not quite sure if we are ready to call these hybrid meetings yet until we've, you know, right. kind of just tested a little bit, bit more of meaning basically these rooms. Because some some room we put this owl in a room, depending on what room it's in, it might be just fine. And it's no issue, literally no issue. Um but you know, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna do. I think everything that we would that everyone wants them to do is what happened. Well, there's a lot of benefits to to doing Zoom meetings, and the one thing it doesn't give us is just the chance to be together as human beings. So it's really good point, and there, there what I think of what some other me people are doing is doing a, a, an in person only meeting every three or four meetings and doing remote the rest so you so you have kind of a little little bit of in person um, maybe on more difficult meetings or when you're meeting with applicants um, so i've heard of that i know some communities are doing that where they're mostly doing uh, virtual and then occasionally throwing in an in-person meeting for the difficult ones or throwing in-person events you know those are obviously i think everyone's really getting tired of the zoom zoom events um, so that's one thing that we could definitely do um, is that maybe we have in-person meetings when we're when we're holding some type of an event or some other type of, you know, something. So. Right. Well, so like I know that next week we're interviewing candidates to be the design or the zoning consultant, planning consultant, I should say, 
for North Main Street. And would that be an example of where we would do it in person, for example? That would that would be great in this particular case, and you'll we'll find this as we move we move more often. A lot of consultants specifically are making good money by virtually going to all of these meetings, they meaning that there's a, yeah yeah. So the so the the three that are coming to uh, this e uh, next uh, they they can only come virtually because they're going to other meetings that it end five minutes before, you know, like they're, they're, they really had a, they're packing all these meetings. So I will, I will say that although that'd be a good thing to have, what I'm finding is that more consultants, specifically right. consultants are doing all the, as many virtual meetings as they can, um, you know, just billable hours, right? I mean, it's just like, they don't have to travel. So right. that's where that's, so we're going to find less of them being able to be, to come to meetings. I find I'm going to, we'll, we'll find. Mm -hmm. So I just want to uh, point out that we are running over our time for this slot. So, um, so we should make a decision. I think we should make a decision. Um, I personally am, uh, as much as I would like uh, pers in-person meetings, I, I think Eching's family, I, you mentioned you just, you know, it hits you guys. And so I think I'm, I'm willing to wait a few more weeks to see how things are going and so that everyone feels comfortable on the board um so i'm willing to go whichever way the board goes um so i uh, but if the board so they're you know well i'm the most flexible but i'm also aware that um the covid just took a big leap forward in europe yeah. um and i'm very happy to keep with remote until we see where that heads so I think I remote works well. I, I, I was just going to say I like the idea of having maybe one in person every once in a while, but I think that's something that you, we can decide down the road. And uh, the remote seems to work pretty well. I um, thank you for that concern. It, it was uh, it's it's so surprising because there are breakthrough um, cases here, Ugh. and um, I'm so but sorry. also I think. The, re the remote has been so helpful for me this past year because I, I don't think I would have gone into gone on the board had it not been for um, the ease of it which is with kids here um, it's it's nice my husband is also on a committee and um, a lot of times we're just you know tag teaming it so <laughs> um, so it's it's been hard so like the less travel travel the better for me but I would I you know welcome the once in a while in person. Yeah, I, I would just to round it out, I would I would echo that. I think on, on the COVID front, certainly I have an unvaccinated infant. So I mean, or toddler now, I guess, which is crazy. Um, so that's always been top of mind for me. But I also think just with childcare duties, like my wife has also, you know, work responsibilities. And so we're always like co parenting. And so it's been really nice. Like I can, my three kids are now downstairs, like asleep, and my wife's on another call. And like, I can juggle when it's remote. So the remote thing is, is helpful, but I also think being in person once, uh, you know, once a month or whatever it ended up being is also beneficial because I do welcome the, the benefit of in-person collaboration, so. I think it's a good idea, Brian. Okay, so. All right, so what I'll do, um, there's nothing to vote here. This is more of just us figuring this out. This is just scheduling. So the idea is that um, maybe for April and May, we basically decide it's gonna be mostly remote and we'll try to figure out, we'll pepper in one or two one or two in-person meetings between April and May is that that's what I'm hearing. Um, but maybe that, I mean, well, we'll just have to play it by ear, I guess, but at least for the next two months, we'll, uh, we'll assume remote only for April, May. Yeah. I, I think yeah. so. I respect the, 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 obviously the desires of people that really are benefiting from remote, um, you know, as it's kind of a counter to my desire to get together at one point, just to, just to mingle. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and maybe the answer is like, yeah, maybe not uh, a planning board meeting. However, if we all get together, we actually do need to post that. <laughs> so that's the weird part. In other words, we would post it as a non-productive meeting. It'd be, well, it would it, be like, yeah, we're going, we're going for having dinner. Having a time is productive. So our next meeting will be at the Black Horse Tavern. How's that? <laughs> uh, it is possible to do that. Um, Okay. All right. So I, I think we, I have a rough idea. Uh, we are meeting. Uh, the only meeting that's scheduled at the moment is next week. So we do meet the 29th. We have some ZBA petitions to do. Um, yes, we do. 
So, and then the ZBA meets on the 31st on those. So we have to do a quick turnaround on those, just a, a quick motion and votes to the ZBA for that. Um, and we have a number and, and, and we have these um, applicants coming for or the um, form in place MAPC and David Gamble and Associates, um, which Great. is actually a, a pretty, it should be, it's good company, um, those three. It's, it's it really um, is, so. We, we actually, speaking of those, I think we'll have to insert, there is another update, which is on, uh, we spoke last time about Holton Street and getting MAPC and Brian, you have an update on that. Well, I, I put that in the weekly updates, so everyone should at least have gotten that out. Yeah. Like, I'll send it to you. Um, but they are work. They're, we're going to be contracting starting, you know, this week. Um, we're working with MAPC for Holton Street, um, and we haven't. They haven't scoped out how much work they can do between now and June thirtieth. But that's the goal of the the work, and we're going to start a visioning process similar um, to North Main Street, but hopefully pepper in using that word again more uh, in person. Uh, events so and june 30th because it's use it or lose it by the end it, of the fiscal it, year it is right. it, whatever work that's done in fy 22 has to be paid for right. in fy 22 well, we'll have to get our money's worth um, we and then the other thing that we we have uh, the other thing on our agenda on that part was onboarding and i don't make if we did any onboarding tonight with you but you will be getting a care package i think suzanne will making up a a, a care package. Suzanne is our administrative assistant, mm -hmm. uh, and it will be fun reading. You will get the zoning bylaws, the CBD regs, and uh, you're guaranteed a lot of s very restful nights when you. The read subdivision those. regs are in there, right? Oh yeah, uh, they should. Be. Oh, excellent! Oh, I was looking forward to those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Nick, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to you. Hands on fire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I'll reach out to you and schedule um, a couple of meetings. That's typically sure. Work. That'd be great. Just so I understand the yeah. the procedures and the and the rules of 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 meeting and whatnot. Of course, yeah. No, um, there's a, there you know there's not a ton of them, but they're very important. Uh, mm -hmm. But so yeah, great. Okay. Well, I got your I got your invite. Uh, so you look like you have my email address now. Yes, I was I was desperately trying uh, to get it and, and finally got it. So I'm um, glad you could join. Great. And, and yeah, I have one question about the only other board that I'm aware of that we have a voting member on, and I could be wrong, is Housing Partnership. Yes, did I not mention that? I'm sorry, yes. So you do well. that now, right? I am on Housing Partnership, yes. And are you gonna keep doing it? I, I would love to keep doing that. <clears throat> That's that's the bonus of being on the planning board is working with the housing partnership people. I uh, they're they're a really good bunch of people, um, and we have we I mean we're working with them on the ADU stuff, um, so I would like to continue working on that. And I just realized we did not vote you in as as clerk slash vice chair. Oh. So I, I nominate Sally in the for the position of clerk slash vice chair, and I think we can all just say, I. Aye. Aye. Okay. So Thank be you it. All. Thank you. Aye. Thank you, Sally. Um, so now. And are we nominating you to keep on the housing partnership? Because I say I to Diab on housing partnership. Yeah, I think I think we're going to, that one isn't as crucial right now in terms of membership as, as, as capital. Because right. that's, okay. but yeah, sure. I'm more, more than happy to continue that. Um, the, so let's move on to uh, our next thing on the agenda, which is the master plan implementation committee. I don't recall the last time we actually discussed this with the full board, um, but Brian, Sally, and I have been meeting, uh, we were meeting quite a bit, and then I think uh, 10 Converse sucked the life out of everything like it did for a while. And then I think we were, we were concerned about when to, um, when to start the outreach. So the idea was that the planning board would reach out to the chairs of a number of boards and they would help us form a selection committee who would select the members for the master plan implementation committee. And we wanted to, uh, the timing was such, we thought it'd be better to do this after the election so that uh, if boards changed that the, the selection would be done by the new board rather than the old board. So Sally started reaching out to the 
high schools because we have a youth representative on the implementation committee. And Sally, I know that you started reaching out to uh, the school. I did. I, I reached out to the um, administrative assistant for the superintendent of schools, whose name is not in my head right now. Um, but I, um, when I was writing up the documents that I told her, I promised her I would send her, which was a description of the master plan implementation committee and a description of the role of the student representative um, um, so that they could find help us find somebody. Um, I got this question in my head about how do you post things on volunteer opportunities on the town website? And so I reached out to Mary Ellen and I got Suzanne Gill on the phone and she said, oh my God, there's a whole lot you have to know about this. You don't know what you don't know. So I finally got to Mary Ellen and she said, don't worry about the high school kid. There's an organization or a person that she works with at the high school to promote all kinds of high school volunteer opportunities. And it's in my notes, which are over there across the room, which so we don't need to do it right now unless you want me to. But I think that between Mary Ellen and me and the high school, we can find that person fairly easily. But what was interesting about the conversation with Suzanne Gill is she said, we have to disband the master plan steering committee um, in order to form the next master plan committee. And Mary Ellen said, well, you don't really need to disband it. You just need to decide it's not operating anymore, which I guess is supposedly the same thing. So that's as far as I got with the whole thing. But you, Diab, did a whole lot of work writing up the um the description of the of the selection committees um and the 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 two people from each of the themes of the master plan that those selection committees would pick right yeah i mean i thought you had pretty much completed yours as well um but so i wrote up uh it was an introductory letter and a and a, and a position description for the people who would be right. on the implementation committee and then there was a, I believe I wrote up an introduction letter to the chairs of the other committees were asking to be on the selection committee. Um, and I think we, we came up with a timeline. Oh, we, we did, thought, okay. Yeah, okay. and the timeline was such that we were looking for the, uh, I think the first meeting of the implementation committee would be um, after town meeting, I believe. That's just when everything worked out in terms of posting the positions for a number of weeks and then allowing the selection committee to look at the postings or look at the applicants and come to a decision. Right so um, I think what, what so I, I just, this is sort of bringing the rest of the board up to, up to, up to steam, up to snuff. Speed. Speed, thank yeah. you. I know it started with an S. Um, on what's happening. So I think that uh, the next step is for Sally, Brian, and I to get back together and try to remember exactly where we left off. We are then, very close to hitting go on yeah, we sending all close. those letters out to the chairs and the high school. Yeah. And with the timeline, I think we got really close on the timeline. Um, yeah. I think I even shared it with Mary, Mary Ellen and she thought it looked very viable. Yeah. But we can verify all of that. Um, and then there is just the question of do we have to disband the master plan steering committee, which still shows up on the town website. Um, and so it's just those administrative things, but we're really close to kicking this off. Yeah, so um, if we need to declare the master plan steering committee defunct, I think we can just say that we no longer need it. And I'd, I'd, I'd probably have to tell Suzanne Gill that. Well, why don't we take a, why don't we just take a vote? We can make it official. So, I mean, the steering committee hasn't met in a long time. The only thing that might be outstanding from them are minutes, but I think it's, it's approval of minutes, but I think that's long past time. We need to worry about that. So uh, I will, uh, I would welcome a motion to disband the master plan steering committee I so move. And a second, please. I second. Okay, and let's do a roll call vote. So, uh, Nick? Uh, I, I approve the disbandment. Okay, uh, Kurt? Aye. I Ching? Aye. Sally? Aye. And Diab says aye as well. Okay, to all of those in our audience who were on the Master Plan Steering Committee, you guys did an amazing amount of work. We have an amazing master plan because of you. And so um, 
we have not forgotten you, even though we just disbanded you. Um, <laughs> so that's done. Uh, so I think that that's pretty much it. We will, uh, I don't know that we'll have any news for you next week, but hopefully, and I'm out of town for next week. So maybe at our, the next meeting after the 29th, we'll be able to report that we pushed go and things have, the machinery has started cranking. So are you going to come to the meeting with the develop the, the consultants? You're going to be in the meeting, right? I will be there remotely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yes, and Brian, will all of their proposals be, all three of them be in the packet? Yeah. Okay. That should make it easy. Okay. Yeah. Well, not easy, but helpful. Um, okay. Um, so that was, I believe that's it for master plan implementation committee. We're going to get out of here like before time. <laughs> so insane. Um, so uh, actually we're, we're only 10 minutes ahead of schedule. How did that happen? So our next are, we have, um, we have public so we can't actually approve the uh, executive. Oh, we are going to go into executive session. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we have it. minutes, you're right. Yes, it, and it's actually on the uh, it's on the agenda so we can do so. So why don't we first go to um, approval of our regular session minutes. So we have one set of minutes from uh, March 8th at 7 p.m. And so, uh, are there any? Uh, so, who was there? Heaching, Kurt, Sally, Cheryl, and I. So, we have enough people to come to uh, to approve those minutes. Are there any uh, amendments to the minutes of Tuesday, March 8, 2022? Uh, Dia, may I interrupt? This is Nancy. Yes, please. Hi. I just wanted to make a note for the record that uh, the March 1st minutes did not get included in your packet. I didn't realize it until later, um, late this afternoon. So I wasn't able to reach Suzanne to, you know, it was too late. So you can go ahead and vote on these, but just recognize that the March 1st minutes are also still out there. Okay. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um, the fact that you put the, you, you do these so in such a timely fashion is, is so appreciated that I just assumed we go, you know, that we've gotten the March 1st. So, but thank you. Um, so uh, any uh, any amendments to the- uh, I, I do have a question about these minutes and sure. whether or not they get used for, if, if there is a sort of a legal action, are they, is this the proof or is it the video as well? As this? Well, this is not the March 15th minutes. This is the March uh, yeah. No, but this is the deliberation. That's the, right, that's true. The, the most important thing in terms of legal action is the recording of the votes. Um, so, Yes, they are looked to in terms of, I don't know if you get a lot of background material because the minutes, I mean, there is a, there is a minimum that you have to put into minutes, which I don't know if there's a, a, a very, I think it's sort of a vague statement of what has to go into minutes, but, but the actual voting is, is this is the legal record of the voting, so. If you need more information on how the how the words matter, we could ask Mina, who would be the person who knows best. Yeah. And, and, and Nick, that's Mina Marcarius. That's one of our town attorneys. Okay. So. Um, yeah. It just it's so dis, it's so jarring to be in the meeting and then to sort of review the meeting when I'm seeing the Zoom. Um, recording because uh -huh. I have seen it and then to see this it's just like all three things are different <laughs> to me it just it's jarring and then what people interpret of what you said so yes so that's really interesting because that does that to say that you have a lot of edits um maybe it's just sort of reconciling with what happened like I'm still sort of debriefing about like all maybe all that happened and it was the first them? time do we want more so, time to review them what? I'm just curious. Um, I'm just curious about how um, precise uh, to make the points that I made, or like to, to clarify. Um, so, if you think that, so I guess the, the what it comes down to is, it, do are the are the minutes it in are the minutes complete as to what you think you said, and do they convey what you said? And if you feel that they don't, then that's then they can be corrected that way. 
Um, obviously, we can't add any extra words beyond what was said at the meeting. So if you need, if you want to elucidate further on a point you made, I don't think that's possible. But that's, a, that's again, where, you know, if we want to, we can bring in town council to tell us um, what what is expected of or what, what you know i'm not even going to use words there just what what is expected so yeah is that something you'd like no i i think it's fine because the, the recordings are available too so one could go back the recordings are available and they are even some of the older ones are off on youtube which means they will probably never go away of much to our embarrassment uh mm -hmm. unless, unless Google kicks WinCam off of their platform. So, um, so, so I, that's off. Okay. So, are there, uh, if there are no amendments, then I uh, would welcome a motion approving the minutes of Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. So moved. And is there a second? Second. And we'll do a roll call vote. And uh, Nick, you have to abstain on this one because you weren't there. Um, so I will call yeah. you up just so you can abstain. Nick. I abstain. Okay. Kurt. Aye. Uh, I Ching. Aye. Sally. Aye. And Deb says aye as well. So we have approved the minutes for the public meeting on March 8th. Um, at this time, we are going to move into executive session to review minutes of executive session. Uh, they were done for um, uh, personnel issues, so we that is one of the very few times we can go into um, executive session. And so we will need to. Um, we're we're not going to be going. We're going to wave goodbye to Richard Lee from the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you uh -oh. for attending, Richard. Uh, so we will not be returning to. So it looks like someone has their hand up. Is this a procedural? Oh, sorry. Question. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I'm the three three four addition project. I was called into the hearing for the planning board today with my architect. Uh, you know, Brian, if you the schedule has changed, please let us know. Otherwise, you know, we we have been waiting patiently for going through. Yeah, no, I uh, emailed you last week. Uh, saying that it was pushed to the 29th. Okay, uh, I haven't got that, but anyway, thanks for clarification. Oh, so sorry that that we left you hanging for so long this evening. Uh, okay. My apologies, my apologies. All right, so I haven't got a calendar or Zoom link to the March 29th yet. I mean, I need to go through my emails, but I did a search today, just so you know. But anyway, thank you, and I look forward to talk with you next week then. Okay, thank you very much. appreciate your patients. Right. Um, um, so that was very unfortunate. Sorry about that. Um, so um, anyway, so the, the board will not be returning back into public session afterwards. So um, we'll say goodbye to uh, WinCam and to all of our Zoom participants. And at this moment, we'll do a roll call vote to enter into, can I have a motion to enter into executive session, please? So moved. And do I have a second? Second. And we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Sally Dale. Aye. Uh, I Ching. Aye. Nick. Aye. Kurt. Aye. And Diab says aye as well. We are now in executive session. Thank you everyone out there in TV land. And uh, I think we're just waiting for WinCam to leave the room. Are you going to bounce them there, Brian? I did.